Hey guys, this is Nick from ForexNoobs.com with my midday analysis. If you enjoy this analysis and my other videos, hit the subscribe button below this video. Subscribing to my YouTube channel gives you an instant notification whenever I add a new video. Also, please hit the like button below if you find this video useful. So before I start the analysis, I want to explain how it works so you can actually use it in your trading. On most Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays, I hold a live analysis session for my Forex Mastermind students. These sessions are recorded and posted to YouTube. I say most because some days I'm busy and other days I'm not trading and I have a rule. When I'm not trading, I do not post analysis. In the analysis, I look for price action reversal setups on around 10 to 20 pairs that I'm currently trading. I check every time frame for every pair taking a systematic approach to doing analysis. Personally, I do this analysis several times per day, but only the midday session is recorded as most setups are spotted then. So what are setups? A reversal setup occurs when price stalls at an area of support resistance and a transition of power occurs from buyers to sellers or from sellers to buyers. I wait for price to approach these areas and spot potential setups. But these setups are not actual trades. When I share a setup on this analysis, it doesn't mean I'm entering the trade right away. Setups are just setups and many setups do not trigger. So they never actually become trades, but some of them do of course, and some of them become trades. To understand this, you have to know a little bit about my strategy, which I share for free on forexfornoops.com. And there's a link to the strategy also below. I use four different tags in the name of these analysis videos. The tags are in brackets at the end of the name. It's important to know these tags just so you understand what is in the video. So if you see no setups, that means there are no setups today, obviously. If you see upcoming setups on, that means there are no setups, but I have spotted some very strong support resistance areas, which may lead to setups later in the day. So that could be anywhere between a few hours to a whole day. And if it's tagged with setups on, that means there are setups today and I'm sharing potential trades in the video itself. So let's get started with the analysis. Today is Wednesday, the 19th of April, 2017. Time is 12.02 here in the UK. You're looking at an ADCAD daily chart. I just went up to the daily. Uh, so yeah, let's do some analysis. Let's look for price action reversal setups. Uh, okay, so on the daily chart here, what do we have? We we're looking at a potential short yesterday, but this has not triggered. Uh, and it's not looking that good anymore. I mean, it's clearly stalling on this resistance area. We're clearly seeing signs of price stalling along here. On the four hour, it's extremely clear, but as you go up to the time frame uh, higher, obviously the candles get condensed together. So now we're seeing more solid indecision, but it's not something I'm, I'm ready to enter because the risk to reward ratio just isn't gonna be that good. Uh, I'm going to keep a close eye on it today, just in case, but yeah, I'm probably not going to, not going to enter anything here. Uh, risk reward ratio got even wider since yesterday. So yesterday was a bit, a bit too wide and today it's gotten even wider. So I'm not too tempted to enter here. Uh, Euro AED, let's see what's happening here. We we're looking at a potential short here yesterday if it's stalled on this resistance area, but it hasn't quite managed to do that. Uh, what it's done is it's popped up to this resistance area and now it's stalling. See up here. Now the question becomes, is it worth moving our support resistance? Uh, but do you guys remember one of the most important rules of support resistance areas? One of the most important rules. Do you guys remember? A few people are typing. No? No, that's not one of the most important rules. There we go. Ash remembers. Tong remembers too. I think it's less than 4.3 in the course or 4.2. No, 4.1. Less than 4.1 in the course. Uh, recent data is the most important. Recent data is the most important. Recent data has a bounce from here. Uh, and oh, obviously there is also a bounce from here recently and a bounce from there. But 
if we zoom out, we're gonna see where the recent data fits. That's what I wanna do right now. Mm -mm -mm. If we zoom out, we can see, and this is on the daily now, we can see that we have recently wick bounces here, right? And this pretty big bounce there. But then you look a bit further down and we have bounces here and here. And then over here we have bounce there. And then this one also kind of bounces from there. So where would you say the recent data is telling us support resistance is? Up here or down here? Ash is saying down. Hank is saying right where the newest candle is. You said down and you were wrong? Who said that you were wrong? No one said wrong. I haven't said who's wrong or right yet. Well, I disagree with you, Stevie. Uh, I think you're right. I think Eric is right. I think Ash is right. I think the whole area, personally, I think the whole area is a bit messy. But I would say there's definitely uh, there's definitely resistance here. So I'm not I'm not going to go short up here because going short up here, we're likely to see something like that happening. It's not not something I'm too interested in. Uh, because there's clearly support and resistance in this area here. So there might also be support resistance here. Uh, it might just be a wide area, but I don't want to get into a situation where I go short from, let me remove these and start again. I don't want to get into a, a trade where I take a short here, then price comes down to here, which is going to be what? Less than uh, one, uh, less than one R. And then it's uh, going to turn around and go up there. I'm not really interested in that. You know, it's very tempting to curve fit your support resistance areas. George uh, was also onto something there when he said, uh, don't, don't move support resistance to fit the trade. He's also onto something there. It's very easy to curve fit with support resistance. You could say, mm, it's stalling there. If I move it up to here, it's going to line up with that. But even though it does, you have to look at the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is saying there is resistance down here. Recent data is showing us resistance down here. So we're seeing recent bounces, very recent. The most recent bounce is there. We're seeing recent bounces. I, I'm, not, I'm not too interested in taking a short trade up from here. So Stevie, you were right. You weren't wrong. Uh, AUD New Zealand. All right, we're still getting it stalling on this area. So we were looking at it yesterday for a potential long trade. Uh, the long trade never triggered because it went pretty much straight down after indecision formed. But it is still stalling here. It's gone a fair way below the support area though. It's gonna be hard to get a trade with a good risk reward ratio here. I'm gonna keep an eye on AUD New Zealand, but I'm probably not gonna take anything here. All right, AUDJPY, what's up with AUDJPY? AUDJPY has broken below support, bounced away from it, kind of like, looks like a continuation really. I see it made two attempts at breaking through, through uh, this resistance. So basically it broke through the support area, made two attempts, at breaking, uh, after it broke through support, support became a resistance. It made two attempts at breaking through resistance and now it's uh, headed down. So there's not really much that I would want to trade here. Not ready to start trading these kinds of continuations. I just, I just don't like them that much, to be honest. All right, AUDUSD. Nice work on the AUDUSD long you guys took last week. 
It's a really good trade. We talked about it in the analysis. It, it, it was a nice, nice trade. But now, uh, I hope you guys exited. Uh, most of you exited with a 2R because it is turning around. Yeah, there's nothing that I going to trade here. So CAD-JPY, let's see what's happening there. CAD-JPY is in between two support resistance areas. Not too much going on. Hmm, EuroCAD, hello. Pushing up to resistance. Huh. Look at the 12 hour stalling kind of heavily on this resistance area. Well, not heavily, but we are seeing signs of price stalling on this resistance area. If you look closely, the signs are first, big bullish candle. We have the wick that pushes up to there, pushes away. Next candle is like what? A sixth of the size of the previous one. Can't really make much ground up through here. We get a nice long upper wick. It just can't push up further. This current candle, unable to break the high of the previous candle. It's even smaller than the previous candle so far. I mean, it hasn't been open long. Keep that in mind. But if it stays something like this, that's a clear sign that uh, buyers are losing steam and that we might be seeing a potential bearish reversal here. So let's keep a close eye on this. It's a pretty good resistance area. It's not an amazing resistance area, but it's a pretty good resistance area. It has held price back... Uh, a few times recently uh, this one here uh, and then we kind of got that sort of uh, continuation from there so it looks okay but not amazing let's keep an eye on it Eurocad I'm, I'm going to watch it there's definitely potential for a short trade here uh, later this evening after this candle closes. So about 10 p.m., uh, 11, 12, something like that. About 12 hours, I would say. Uh, I'm definitely going to check back on this. Uh, okay. Euro GBP. What's going on with Euro GBP? All right, it's broken below the support area. We don't have any support below this at the moment. Let's see if we can quickly place one and get the super quick support area all right i'm placing a support area here right now i'm going to take the chart back and try to confirm this based on uh the wick bounce and the continuation kind of body bounce there let's see uh we don't really have much data do we all right last time it was here was 2014 uh, in 2014, we do have some evidence of support resistance here, but it's pretty weak overall. 2012, we also have some evidence. You know, there's not that much evidence for, to support the placement, but... I'm just going to keep it there for now and just see how, how, it, uh, how it reacts when price reaches this level. We'll see what happens. We'll let price confirm the support resistance area for us. So what I mean by that is if price comes down to here and then we get obvious signs of it stalling, that's a confirmation. If price just pushes straight through it, then that would be suggesting that there is no support here. If price bounces from above it, again, that suggests that support or well, resistance is higher. So yeah, let's just, let's just see how it goes. It's not that important anyway. It's just, we're just gonna place it there and just see how it uh, plays out. All right, Euro JPY. Oh, right, 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 right. This one here. Potential continuation. Uh, I think we talked about this yesterday. Oh, yeah, we talked about this yesterday, but in the kind of members only stuff. There was a potential short continuation here, but uh, May's speech turned it around, which was unfortunate. 
and nothing much going on there right now. Uh, you are in New Zealand. Um, in between two support resistance areas, so it's already kind of reversing. So it's too late to enter a trade there. Hmm. That is pretty nice looking. Pretty nice looking, wouldn't you say? Good risk to reward ratio. Really, really good risk to reward ratio. If the candle closes as is, this would be a nice short setup with a good risk to reward ratio. 2.3, and that's with a pretty uh, generous uh, entry and stop. Uh, tighter entry, you, know, you could easily do 2.4, 2.5, something like that. Just depends on what you want your entry and your stop to be, but you got a lot of room to play with your entry and stop. Uh, with this setup, provided that the indecision candle stays as is. Now, remember, we are pretty much halfway through today, uh, or just a little bit further than halfway through today. Uh, so this candle could close completely differently. This candle is going to close at 10 p.m. this evening. So it's looking good right now. We have like a potential setup here on EURUSD, a potential short reversal setup. We just need to kind of wait and see uh, how this candle closes. I don't want to jump in too early. 12 hour, on the 12 hour, we are seeing signs of price stalling, but uh, right now buyers are pushing up again. So this 12 hour candle, these two 12 hour candles translate to some pretty nice indecision on the daily, but on the 12 hour, it doesn't look that good. That doesn't mean it can't be entered to be honest, but uh, 12 hours, it's the same situation. We've got nine hours, 40, uh, 46 minutes, uh, 42 minutes, sorry, until it closes. Uh, the eight hour, yeah, we're getting nice indecision. Six hour, four hour, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm just gonna wait for it on the daily, I think. I'm gonna monitor it on the 12 hour too, although it's not gonna be, it's gonna be hard to get a good entry point on the 12 hour. Uh, maybe monitor it on the eight hour, see what happens after this candle closes, this current candle which is in an hour and 41 minutes. I'm just gonna keep a close eye on this. It's clear that we're getting price stalling at resistance. So, yeah, let's let's keep an eye on it. Yeah, it is, uh, are you saying this is messy to the left, Steve? Because it is somewhat messy, but the resistance is, is also somewhat clear. That bounce there, that bounce there. And the fact that it's stalling there right now is just that extra bit of confirmation. You also see that there. All right, you were talking about EuroCAD. Uh, let's pull EuroUSD up. Yeah, EuroCAD is even messier actually than uh, EuroUSD. Let's pull EuroUSD up to here. EuroCAD's definitely a bit messy to the left and it's, it's not the strongest area of support resistance, but when you look back to these two very strong bounces, then uh, that kind of lends some weight to this as a good resistance area. So these two bounces here, uh, plus that bounce there, it, it looks okay to me. EuroCAD, EURUSD, we are in business. The Euro pairs are showing us some nice trades or trade setups even, potential trade setups because the indecision hasn't closed yet. All right, Euro, JP, Euro there was nothing on EURGBP, EURGPY. I think we already looked at Euro JPY. Yeah, we did. And we already looked at Euro New Zealand. Yeah, I'm going over stuff we already did. Ooh, hello. I really don't want to trade GBP, but it's really, really trying to tempt me. I didn't want to trade it yesterday. I still kind of don't want to trade it today, but I'm more open to the idea of trading it today. Wow.
Yeah. Tom, you hit the nail on the head. It's a retrace setup. News-based moves. What do we know about news-based moves? And yesterday was a news-based move on GBP. News-based moves. They cause big spikes up or down, depending if it's good or bad news for the, for the currency, GBP. Uh, yesterday's news caused a big spike up on GBP, Theresa May's speech. Now, it's stalling on our pre-placed resistance area. So it's stalling at an area that we've had for quite some time up here. With it stalling right here, showing this nice little indecision candle and it being a move caused by news, which often, very, very often retraces back to where it started before the news. Very tempted to take a short here, very tempted. I wasn't interested in trading GBP yesterday, but today, hmm. Let's keep a close eye on this one, guys. We really, really should keep a close eye on this one. 12 hour, we're getting signs of it stalling. Eight hour, we're getting signs of it stalling. Six hour, obviously all the lower time frames, we're, we're gonna see signs of it stalling. Uh, I'm gonna monitor this on the 12 hour and on the eight hour, both of these. Uh, maybe even on the daily, we'll just see what happens there. But I'm gonna mostly monitor these on the eight hour and 12 hour, see how they play out. We got an hour and 40 minutes until the eight hour candle closes. So, I'm gonna check back in an hour and 40 minutes, see how this is, uh, how this closes, and I might, might be tempted to take a short here. Yeah, probably, probably reduce my position size due to uh, the risk of Theresa May saying something again, that's gonna make it go up further. Uh, but that being said, yesterday is over been reading the news and I'm not really expecting any other big surprises with GBP. So I didn't want to trade yesterday. I made all you guys promise me yesterday you weren't going to trade GBP. But uh, today is a new day and uh, probably by the time we actually enter this trade, it's not even going to be today anymore. It's going to be tomorrow. Uh, so I, I, think, I think we can kind of make this work potentially. Keep a close eye on GBP AUD guys. It looks really good. And I'm excited to see the other two GBP bets coming up in a second. GBP JPY, what is going on here? I oh, know this is just trending up. It's in between support resistance areas. GBP JPY this year has just been such a messy pair. It's a good pair. It used to be one of my favorites, but this year it's just been so messy. I don't really like trading it that much this year. Uh, GP USD, huh? All right, GP USD, just wait and watch for me. I want to see what happens when it hits this resistance area. So obviously it has already hit this resistance area and we got like this perfect wick bounce from it, which is no surprise because it's a decent resistance area. Decent resistance area here. So we got this perfect wick bounce from it. And we're back to pre-Brexit, pre-Brexit levels, climbing to pre-Brexit levels. Uh, so let, yeah, let's keep a close eye and see what happens with GBP USD. I don't want to, I don't want to jump the gun here. What I want to see is I want to see price approach here, uh, possibly stall here, and then we could potentially take a nice little short trade. I probably wouldn't want this to be a long-term short trade, but we'll just see what happens at the time. So nothing really imminent with GPUSD. Just wait and watch. Wait and watch the 1.2900 level. All right, New Zealand CAD. New Zealand CAD's broken up through resistance. And it's just kind of like stalling a bit. Should we pull this area up? Let's see. I've been a bit lazy adjusting my support resistance areas. I've been a bit lazy adjusting my support resistance area, so I haven't really been adjusting them as often as I should. 
because like with my personal trading, I don't really need to adjust them. You know, I, I just adjust them on the fly. But when I'm doing support resistance areas for you guys, obviously I need to go through, I need to check and double check and then I need to post them to the, to the site. I've been a bit lazy doing that. I don't need to do it for my personal trading, but for you guys, I, I need to do it more meticulously. And I've, like I said, been lazy with it. So I'm adjusting these now, like I would in my personal trading, I'm just adjusting them on the fly. Uh, and we do have a potential short on New Zealand card. Got a decent risk to reward ratio, decent. Messy uh, area for it to move down into. So down here, kind of a bit messy, not too messy, but kind of a bit messy. So mostly this area here. Uh, so we could get something like that happening. But overall it looks okay. I'm going to keep a close eye on this. Keep a close eye on it, see how it plays out. Yeah, Simon, I, I see what you mean. I, I somewhat agree. It's not, it's not amazing because of the messiness through there, but it's worth keeping an eye on. We'll, we'll just see how it plays out. So, yeah, New Zealand card. We've got a lot of uh, potentials today. Uh, New Zealand card. Uh, did we do New Zealand JPY? I can't remember. Yeah, we did. No, we didn't. We didn't. All right, New Zealand JPY. Nothing much going on here that I would want to trade. New Zealand USD. It's up above resistance, so nothing much here. USD can. Let's get to the USD pairs. Uh... All right. Yeah, I'm gonna add an area here. I know some of you are thinking, wait, Nick is curve fitting. He's just putting areas where he sees price stalling, but this area definitely has shown us some support resistance recently here and a wick bounce there. Uh, price stalled for a candle as it was coming down through here. Price kind of bounced here before continuing up. So we have recent signs of support resistance. And then if you pull it back a bit, we see some more obvious signs. Uh, continuation bounce there. And then... Uh, yeah, further back, we see that big bounce there. So we are seeing some pretty solid signs of support resistance here. Let's keep a close eye on this. Uh, 12 hour is looking somewhat decent. Eight hour, six hour, so on and so on. Ooh, look at the six hour. That's nice. Uh, yeah, we, we have potential short here. Wow, we have a lot of potentials right now. Uh, three of them are CAD pairs. Uh, yeah, this this looks pretty pretty nice. USD CAD six hour, also twelve hour. Keep a close eye on this one, guys. It looks looks pretty good. And USD CAD trades tend to be pretty nice overall, because uh, USD CAD tends to pick a direction and then just move in it until it hits your target. Uh, USD CHF, not much going on. USD JPY, yeah. Not really that much going on on USDJPY either. All right, so let's summarize this analysis. EuroCAD potential short trade. Keep a close eye on it on the 12 hour, 12 hour, six hour, eight hour, uh, all of those time frames. Uh, on the daily, probably not, but 12 hour, six hour, eight hour, something like that. New Zealand CAD potential short on the daily, uh, on the 12 hour, and yeah, mostly those time time frames, daily and 12 hour. USD CAD, we've just discussed this one, no point really going over it again. Keep a close eye on the 12 hour, six hour. Uh, Euro USD, potential short trade, 
daily. Yeah, mostly the daily. I'm gonna monitor it on the 12 hour, but mostly the daily. So potential short trade on Euro USD. And I think final was GBP AUD. GBP AUD is stalling on the resistance area. So keep a close eye on it on the eight hour, uh, the 12 hour, the six hour, uh, all those lower time frames. Wait, did we have AUD CAD too? No, we did not. No. So we have potential setups on Euro CAD, New Zealand CAD, USD CAD, Euro USD, GBP AUD. Nice. Thanks for watching the analysis. I hope it was useful. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button below. Also, for instant notifications when I post analysis or other cool videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button below. Once the setups I share in this analysis trigger, I post live updates as I manage the trade, such as my entry, exit, stop, and when to get out of the trade. For these updates, add me on Facebook or Twitter by clicking the buttons below. I'll see you in the next video.